Recording in progress. So we're going to chapter 32, Economics, Monetary Policy. When we talk about monetary policy, basically we're talking about a government policy that involves using money supply and interest rates to control aggregate demand. Because whatever we do, it's based on what we buy in the economy, our consumption. So if government has to come up with, government wants to control what we consume. So if there's a way to control what we consume, government can, we need, we call them instruments, uh, an instrument, a policy instrument that can be used to control what we consume. One of them is monetary policy. So let's go down and see what they wrote here. Monetary policy. Okay, they said in chapter 31, look, uh, chapter 31 looked at how a government could influence aggregate demand by adjusting level of taxation and government expenditure. That is using fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. Then another way of controlling aggregate demand in the economy is to adjust interest rate or mon the money supply. This approach of demand management is called monetary policy. Aggregate demand in the economy is affected by growth in the money supply. The money supply is the total amount of money that circulates in the economy. It is quite difficult to define the money supply. Economists use a number of methods. One simple way is to remember that the money supply includes all notes and coins in the economy plus any money held in bank accounts. So for money supply, it means the inflow of money cut across the, world, the country, cut across the economy, how money flows across the country. That is what money supply is. So when we talk about this money supply, so we're talking about the coins, the notes, and money that are kept in the bank. So all these things will find their way into the system. So how they find their way into the system is through monetary policy, which can be interest rate or money supply. So what is interest rate? Okay, let's just go to, down to interest rate now. For interest rate, they said interest is a price paid to lenders for borrowed money. It is the price of money. So for example, so for interest rates, interest, interest itself is the amount you pay for borrowing or saving. Yeah. So here, let's, they said in most countries, there are many different ways of interest. There are a number of reasons for this. So what are the reasons why we have different rates of interest? First, you have to understand what interest rate is. Yeah. The price of borrowing or saving, which can be used to correct or to control aggregate demand. Mm -hmm. So when you link interest rates to aggregate demand, it's basically talking about how much you can borrow or how less you can borrow. You understand? Because it's the price of borrowing. So the amount you can borrow will be determined by the, the level, the rate of interest. So if the rate of interest is high, you might not be willing to borrow more. But if the rate of interest is less, then you can borrow more. So when you can borrow more, it affects our aggregate demand. When you can borrow less also, it, all, it affects the aggregate demand. That is what we want to look out onto now. I think interest rate is clear. So let's, they said, different countries have their own different interest rates. And what are the reasons? One, different banks charge different rates as they co compete with each other for business. So. One of the reasons why we have different interest rates in countries is that different banks have their own rate of interest because they have to compete with each other. So competing with you would mean that my price is less than yours. Yeah. So if I have to get more customers, I have to sell at a price lower than yours. So that means, our, and what are we selling? We are selling loans. Yeah. We are selling loans, right? So we are selling credits. So if the price of borrowing from me is less, I would be willing to borrow from you they will be willing to borrow from me. Mm -hmm. But if it's, if it's yours that is lesser, they will be willing to borrow from you. That's the first point there. I think it's clear. Mm -hmm. Two, rates are higher if money is borrowed without security. So another reason why there are differences in, the, in interest rate is that rate interest or borrow loans that are secured, secured loans, mm -hmm. that means they, are, they have collateral. Mm -hmm. So the amount you pay for loans that are secured is less than the amount you have to pay for unsecured loans. Mm -hmm. For unsecured loans, there are no collateral. Yeah. So there's no at asset attached to it. So you might be, the banks know they might be losing. Uh, so they will charge high rates yeah. to discourage you from borrowing. Yeah. They don't want to tell you no, because they wouldn't want to say no. But they might give you high interest rates to discourage you. And if you are, if you are willing to pay such, it's fine for them. Mm -hmm. So that's the second reason. If the secured loans are lesser than unsecured loans in terms of their rates, I think it's clear. Yeah. We're talking about reasons why different, we have different rates of interest. The first one is that different banks charge different interest because they are into competition. Yeah. The second one is that secured loans, they are secured loans, they are unsecured loans. Mm -hmm. Secured loans have lesser interest than unsecured loans. I think the second yeah. is clear. Uh, the, I want to ask yes. Collateral assets that are linked, that are used 
to stand for the pro- for the money you are borrowing. So if I'm going to borrow five hundred thousand from you, I would have assets worth of maybe one point five million. So that asset that I'm using is a collateral. So it's standing for what I'm borrowing. In case my I, I I did not pay back, you will be able to sell my asset and get your money and return the uh, the remaining change for me. Clear. The third reason, the amount paid to borrowers is higher than the amount give us to sa- give to given to savers. This allows money lenders such as banks to make profit. So another reason why we have different rate of interest is that you know we said the rate of interest is the price of borrowing and the price of saving. So if you are saving, the interest you get, the, the amount paid to borrowers is higher than the amount given to savers. So if you are saving, you get less. But the amount banks will get from borrowing you is higher than the amount you get from saving. Yeah. Do you get the point here? The amount they give to those that are borrowing from them in terms of interest is higher than the amount they pay to save us. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's another point. And the last one, some of the highest rates of interest are charged to credit card users. So for example, they said, in contrast, the rate, okay, for credit card users, you know, because you are going to, you have your credit, your card is already loaded yeah. with that amount of money that you don't have. Yeah. So because you don't have that amount of money, if you are going to pay back, you have to pay more. Because you are, the bank is giving you what you don't have. And you're going to spend what you don't even have in your account. Mm-hmm. So for that to happen, for banks to be willing to do that, they have to charge you high. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So these are the reasons why we have different interest rates. Yeah. Clear? Okay. Good. <laughs>